Hi folks, I'm in beardless mode now, how about that? It is uh, Welcome to Mori Speedruns, it's show number 11, November 29th, 2015. Uh, the character Noggle is an elf mage, and he is at 900 feet. He is currently level 21. So, uh, I haven't played at all since last time, so he's right where we left off. And we're going to check out 900 feet and go down to 950, maybe deeper. So that's what we're going to do. Let's play some Moria. Before we get started, let's check out... The Wheel of Source Code! Alright, let's spin, it, spin the wheel, folks. Hmm, I see a long-named one there. Something about command count. Count command or something? Right long, that's an easy one. Something about print. Okay, let's stop the wheel. Print objects. Well, 91 lines long, yikes. Print objects. So one thing you should know is that print doesn't mean print to a printer. In old programs, it means show it to the screen. <clears throat> or to a file. Prints a list of random objects to a file. Note that the objects produced is a sampling of objects, which be expected, which can be expected to appear on that level. R-A-K, Robert Allen Kaneki. So what this is, this is actually a wizard level function doesn't mean you have to be a wizard to understand it. It's a wizard mode function. So if you're in wizard mode, you can say, show me a list of objects for this depth. And it will print out a bunch. It'll just list off a bunch of objects. So the idea is that you can quickly debug the, uh, what's the word? The object availability for a given depth. So when it says level, it means depth. That's the other thing you should know. Let's go over it, shall we? Okay, we get our depth, we get the number of objects, and a flag whether we're gonna do small objects or not. The rest of it is the big function. Otherwise, parameters no good, makes sense. So here we are. If we say uh, more than 10,000 objects, we limit it. <laughs> Uh, after that, we got a file name, so we're not going to print this to the screen, I don't think. It's just going to be to a file. We open the file, and we go to town. So, there's the fprintfs, and there's our file. We say random objects being produced. We're not in a loop yet or anything, and there's the loop. For each, objects we, for each object we want to make, we... What do we do? we go into our treasure list and we make a new object. Hmm. Ben confused. Which way does invcopy go? It goes source destination. So it's going into the sorted objects array. T list is the static list of all the treasures. That's why it's T. Magic treasure makes the thing magic sometimes. Um, okay, we call it store-bought. We automatically flag it as store-bought. Um, if it is cursed, then we inscribe it with damned. And finally, we print out the actual name of the object. So we do store-bought so that it's completely identified. There's no sense in printing out, it's a quartz ring, right? It doesn't make sense. So we, that's why we do the store-bought. Um, push T. Okay, um, what's going on there? J. So there's that. Yeah. So, uh, this just gets us another random index into the treasure list, apparently. Yeah, I'm confused too. I don't know how J ever changes inside the function, inside the loop. 
Do you? J stays the same. Been confused. Any ideas, folks? I don't know. <laughs> it's T list of J every time. Is Magic Treasure ch changing it? It can't. Well, we'll leave that up to you, folks. That's uh, an exercise to the reader. <laughs> How in the world is uh, are we not pointing to the same thing? Oh, you know what? I did it backwards. Okay, folks. This is the source, and this is the destination. That's what's going on. So we're just getting a temporary J. Just taking anything in, in, the, in the treasure list. And we're overloading it. We're copying into it. Huh. How about that? So it kind of messes up whatever the J one is. But anyway, we're in wizard mode, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, um, let's t quickly look at the callers. It'll be uh, in dungeon. Print objects. And if you do control O, ba bam, we run that. But you have to be in wizard mode, otherwise it will not work. All right, folks. That is the print objects function of files.c in the GMORIA sources. And that concludes the wheel of source code. Hey, 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 it's Moria time, folks. Let's play the game. Wisdom and dexterity a bit down there, huh? See that? Okay, right where we left off. Hopefully we can find an amulet or a nice, whoa, <laughs> long-eared bat or something nice to wear. Yeah. Oof. This, uh, this room could be better than us. <laughs> Look at that. That's bad. That's better. So we put the icky thing to us to sleep. We'll just rest up. Can't rest up. And now the rodents are awake. Close the door. Can't close the door. We're poisoned. This might be a quick episode, folks. <laughs> uh, let's just walk away. Watching our hit points dwindle. That was a bad move I just did there. There we go. I could have cast Cure, uh, cure Poison. Well, this is bad. Now something invisible is hitting us and dwindling our, which was it? Clumsy, right? So dwindling our dexterity. We're out of mana. Hmm. Well, let's uh, just run away, shall we? Hopefully he's not right on our tail. Rest. Okay, back at it. That is uh, actually a feature of the game <laughs> that the monsters aren't too, uh, what's the word, tenacious. Gauntlets, flail. Well, 
What kind of gauntlets are we wearing? We're wearing plus two, so we're going to try these on. Watching our AC. No difference. Hmm. Well, I guess that wand of stone to mud is the least useful, so we'll take that. Harry mold. And continuing on. So you can see that the uh, Invisible creatures are just everywhere here. And if we ever run into a closet, or a death closet, uh, we'll probably die. The character will be dead. So that is the, the dice that we're rolling here. It's like, how deep can we go before we reach this death closet? And then we just can't get away. And that is how many Moria games end. Uh, of the of the games that make it that far, right? Wonder what is happening here. You have no light to read by. I gotta pay attention to those messages. Yikes. So yeah, in the big uh, histogram of, you know, Moria games, most games for a mage anyway, and very early. And if they make it past, ooh, geez. If they make it past a certain point, then, uh, yeah, ooh. Then they make it a long ways. Um, the next hurdle, of course, is that see invisible item. Is that cure blindness or blindness? Blindness. Okay, unlocking the next side of the board. Come on, good stuff. Money's good. So, huh, piddly rooms over here, folks. Lots of money. Ooh, what's that? Summon monster. No thanks. Not gonna cast that. Yeesh. Ooh, an Umber Hulk. Yeah, it's best thing to do is to uh, get some distance from an Umber Hulk. Like so. Where are you, man? Huh, so how do we get him? He's around the corner. Oh. Okay, this is a recipe for disaster right here, folks. Max mana chart, no thanks. Kind of in a situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. See that? That is a bad situation. If we 
try to go after those rodents, that Umber Hulk will get us. And he can probably open doors. Yeah, what would you do? Run away? Run away. Hey, there he is. Solved our problem for us. Nice, but we're out of mana. But we can close that door, maybe. Okay, alright. This might be good, might be bad. Could be awesome. We did it. Cool. That worked out way better than it could have. That's half the game, is realizing what is a, uh, a deadly situation. Light crossbow. Yeah, it's one of those games, you know this, that uh, the winning strategy is, is quite often just to flee, to live, to fight another day. That's the whole point of the game. The only battle that you probably don't want to run away from is the Balrog battle. Just because you'll uh, invest all your stuff into it, right? Doo -doo. Okay. I think it's time to go down a level. Down a depth. This level's pretty done. Well, I don't know how to get down there or over there. So we'll just go down. 950 feet, here we are. Okay. Got a lance that we can't carry. Once I tried to get to uh, the stat, the gain stat potion uh, level pretty early on. Ooh, amulet. Yeah, once I try to get to 1250 really quickly, so I could like up my strength, so I could carry stuff, it doesn't work out very well because of the invisible creatures. Here we go. We're going to wear that U tortoise shell amulet, and we're going to watch all of our stats. See that? Our charisma just went up, folks. <laughs> we don't need that. So, I don't know. We'll hang on to it and sell it at the store. Yeah, Charisma doesn't do much in the game. What was that? Hmm. Have a mushroom. Wow! That is the first nice set of armor we've seen. Don't have a prayer at lifting it. I'm gonna drop something. WV 37. And because of its weight, 29 pounds, we can't even, we can't wear it. <laughs> What's the heaviest thing we own here? Eight rations of food. Look at that. We dropped all that stuff and we still can't actually wear it. What a shame. 
You know what? We should probably just go up and sell that. Man. You know what? Let's uh, pick that up again. We're going to identify it. Wow. <laughs> oh. No can do, folks. Throw that one back in. Darn it. Yeah, let's just keep playing. Maybe at the end we can uh, go back and sell it. Wisdom chart. That might be interesting. Hmm. Currently dwindled a little bit. Oops. Oops. Big empty room, folks. Makes you wonder if there's something invisible in there. Is he following us? Nope. That was a bit of a crazy Ivan move I pulled there. Just do a random magic missile behind you. A ring. Can't carry it. Well, let's try it. Have we tried on an Azurite ring yet? I don't know. Hmm. So we are going to wear it over the right hand. Watching all of our stats. Nothing happened. Okay, wearing the uh, Ring of Slow Digestion, watching all of our stats. Huh, our mana jumped up by a point. So I don't know what's going on there. Oh, see, I just wasted time trying to identify that. Drop that ring, pick up that amulet. Trying to, uh, you know, if it was a really good ring, you'd know it. Because stats would jump up. So if stats aren't jumping up, It's really not that good. All right. We are out of time, folks. Does this go quickly or what? Can't believe it. Okay, where was that uh, armor? Way over there. Just clean these guys up. Oh, maybe we're dead, folks. <laughs> uh, and running away down to this depth. Another azurite ring. We just went, because we went down that depth, we've lost the uh, metal brigandine armor. It's gone. So with that armor gone, we're kind of stuck down at a thousand feet here. 
Dexterity a little bit low now. What do you do? We're almost at uh, gain stat potion level, folks. And the uh, death quasis just got a little bit closer. So with that, uh, let's check out uh, Noggle in the charts, okay? All right, let's check it out. Okay, recap time. Here's Noggle. Hmm. I always like to look at this experience point chart to make sure it's still, well, it's kind of leveling off there, isn't it? It's a bit concerning. Um, hit points, fine. Armor class, we jumped up, but then we jumped back down because we were too slow. So, uh, we'll have the best armor class ever. Um, okay. We've got our most gold points, gold pieces ever as well. Our dexterity went down. Our gold went up by about a thousand. And we're down a uh, hundred feet. Only 280 experience needed. Um, in our pack, there's quite a few things that we need to take up to the town. I bet you this tortoise shell amulet really helps our score. Uh, we've been going for about 5 hours and 40 minutes and 10 and a half days in the dungeon. Let's take a look at stuff here. Let's, okay, so only Morel is gone for longer. In days. Noggle is on top with 1,000 feet, being our deepest depth. Most experienced by a couple thousand. 3,000, really. 21, level 21. Yeah, we'll be on top of most of these. Hit points, 100. Armor class, 37, but we only had that for a second. This is our highest armor class. Objects, 198. Gold, well, we're not quite there with gold yet. And the all-important score. 17778, but that is because we're holding on to those amulets, folks. Once we get rid of those, we sell them, we'll be low. <laughs> Lower. Ugh, went the wrong way there. So what's next for Noggle? Uh, I don't really like being at a thousand feet. What do you do? So uh, we can go up to the town, sell those amulets, Buy some identify scrolls. Identify everything in our pack and what we're wearing if we need to. And uh, yeah, then we'll uh, load up on food. We don't really need food, but we'll load up on light. And uh, we'll buy a couple more scrolls of word of recall and we'll head back down to a thousand feet. Still gotta find that sea invisible item. Hey, maybe it's in the store. Maybe we have all this money, we'll be able to buy it in the store. Who knows? So hopefully next time we'll be playing with that Sea Invisible item. I hope so. So uh, on a personal note, uh, the, my workout month is just about done. I only have one day tomorrow. Last week I did 2,000 uh, calories burned per day. Uh, so I did an, another perfect week and I also added another 100 calories. So I was minus 500 from the first week. Now I'm only at minus 400 for the full thing. And anyway, I have one more day to go. So anyway, I'll, I won't bore you with the, with the work and stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, I hope you're enjoying your game. Uh, our game's going pretty good here, eh? Pretty good. Not bad. Maybe I can be a little bit more aggressive. But I'm afraid of those death closets. You should be too. <laughs> All right. Hope you're enjoying your game, folks. Till next time. See you later. Bye-bye.